In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the features available in the Animation Rigging Package. Animation Rigging enables you to create procedural motion for animated skeletons at runtime. This means we can blend between keyframe animations and procedural animations smoothly. We'll learn how to set up the rigging constraints and look at some examples of how this package can be used. Let's start by adding the Animation Rigging Package to our project using the Package Manager. In the Package Manager, make sure to click on the Advanced dropdown and select the Show Preview Packages option. Once you find the Animation Rigging option, install it. First, we want to be able to easily visualize and select the bone structure of our character. To do this, let's select the root game object and add a bone renderer component. In this component, we can add all the transforms from the skeleton to the transforms list. This step is optional, but this will allow Unity to create the visible skeleton gizmos. By doing this, we can now select the skeleton parts in the scene view directly without having to navigate on the hierarchy. To continue the setup, we need to add the rig builder component to our root game object. The rig builder component needs to be added to the game object that has the animator component. Rig builder needs to affect the same hierarchy as the animator. Using rig layers, the rig builder component allows for stacking of multiple rigs that can be enabled or disabled at any time. We can add a new rig by creating a new game object as a child of the character, naming it rig example, and adding the rig component to it. Now we can drag the rig example to the rig layers list of our previously created rig builder. This is the basic setup so we can start adding constraints to our animations. Every constraint needs to be a child game object of the rig, and they interact based on their order in the hierarchy. This means if you add a rotation constraint and then a two-bone constraint, the two-bone constraint will override the rotation constraint. Let's add a new child game object to the rig and call it parent constraint. In this game object, let's add the multi-parent constraint component. This allows you to make part of the character's bones move and rotate as if they were children of a new game object. In the first field, we'll add the transform that we want to be affected by the constraint. In this case, let's drag the character's spine to it. In the source objects list, we need to say what object is reference for the constraint. In this case, we want to create a controller for the constraint that is easy to visualize and modify. So let's create a game object as a child of the constraint, call it controller, and align it to the spine transform by selecting both the object and the spine at the same time, navigate to the animation rigging menu, and selecting align transform. If you select the controller game object, you'll notice that in the scene view, we now have a new animation rigging UI on the bottom right corner. This allows us to add gizmos to game objects to make them work as controllers that are easy to select in the scene view. Let's add the circle effector as the shape of the controller and change the size and rotation. Now that we have a nice controller in the scene, let's go back to the parent constraint and add the controller as a source object by dragging it into the source object field of the multi-parent component. If we enter play mode, you can see that even when our character has an idle animation playing, we can select the controller we've created, rotate it, and it will blend the movement of the constraint with the existing animation. Let's create another constraint. This time, we'll try the two-bone IK constraint. This constraint allows us to move the hands of the character while the whole arm moves accordingly. To do this, we just need to add another empty game object to our rig, call it right hand IK, and add the two-bone IK constraint component to it. In this component, we have to reference the root, middle, and tip of our bone structure. In this case, we'll drag it in reference to the right upper arm as the root, right lower arm as the middle, and right hand as the tip. We also want to create a controller for this constraint, so we'll repeat the same process of creating an empty game object and aligning it to the hand transform using the animation rigging align transform feature. Let's try to add a square effector to the controller. Once our controller is done, we can drag it into the target field of our two-bone IK constraint component. If we enter play mode, we can see that the character's right hand remains at the location of our target instead of being positioned by the idle animation keyframes. That's because the animation is now being blended with the IK constraint. We can now select the effector and try to move around the hand. With the constraint, the whole arm moves in a realistic way based on the target's position. If we repeat the same process for all the character's limbs, we can now have full control of the arms and legs while they all blend with the original idle animation. 
we've prepared two examples showcasing what can be achieved using this feature. You can find the link for it in the description of this video. If you want to see all the available constraints and features from this package, you can import the official samples to your project using the package manager. Thanks for watching.